that was for real. That was the four o'clock bell. I'm John Zadar. This is Tuesday, March 14th, and you are watching On Top and Hot. Now, what I want to do on this show is share information with you about OTC and penny stocks. Primarily, we're looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. But I'm trying to give you as much information each day as I possibly can in the little time that we have. You know, like all that news. That news is all penny stocks, all from the OTC market. There is eight days worth of news there. Eight days, folks. Otis is at the top newest is down at the bottom and this is the good stuff i've read every single one of these so i'm not wasting your time just filling in the gaps no this is news i think could get a stock moving there's acquisitions mergers uplistings bankruptcies whether it's good news or bad news if i think it has a chance of moving the stock i put it in over there so there's a lot of good information there and it just occurs to me yesterday you probably heard some background noises well, the fact is, I make these, and then I record them. Well, when I recorded it, I didn't turn off my microphone, so you were hearing stuff in the background. So that was me, not you. My apologies. Now, when I say all those penny stocks are on the OTC, that does not infer that all penny stocks are on the OTC. By far, no penny stocks are on every single market because the only thing that makes them a penny stock is their price if they're under five bucks and they are everywhere so we look at them all i do research on them all and to be honest this is the site i do my research on the otcmarkets.com website and i'm doing research on my major exchange stocks here too now i'm not saying it's perfect for that it is real good for the otc because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the sec for every single otc stock and a bunch of major exchange stocks so what I'm saying is quit going out to Google doing searches for tidbits of information, trying to find that needle in a haystack. Just come on over here. All they got is needles. They'll prick you to death. <laughs> and if you can't find what you're looking for, then go back to your haystack. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. <clears throat> That's pretty low, but I have not refreshed this in a long time today. Let's give this a bump and a jump. Really? Ooh, things are really getting sad and slow. Everything fell. $1.2 billion in our dollar volume. What was it the other day? 1.4? Whatever it was, this is lower. Anytime we get too close to the one, I get a little squishy in my pants. Share volume under 4 billion. I mean, under 5 billion is bad. Under 4 billion, I mean, we're really, really getting desperate. The man in a coma, his blood has stopped moving through his veins. And our trades were under 250,000. Folks, there's just no light here. The tunnel is getting darker and darker. And with the situation the way it is with the economy, the world, I know we're done with COVID, but there's just so many other things. And honestly, I think everybody's pulling money out of the market to survive. They lost money in crypto. They had to get some money. They pull it out of the OTC. They got to pay the bills. They pull it out of the OTC. I think the whole markets are suffering on volume right now, not just because people aren't buying as much. There's just not as many people who are buying. And before we jump out of here to take a look at the stocks I found for us today, I wanted to bring you up to date on the three we looked at yesterday. All three of them were up today. We looked at ticker CYN. She was up almost 5% today. We also looked at RCAT, ticker RCAT, up almost 10% today. And then we finally looked at a warrant attached to a SPAC, BYTSW. It was up 64% today. So if you want to know if it's worth watching the show, yeah, I think so. But <laughs> that's just one man's opinion. All right, let me show you the stocks I got for you today. This first stock we're looking at is a penny stock on the OTC, and I did not find it. It was brought to my attention by a YouTube viewer, Cleddy. Thank you, my friend. Cleddy actually brought this to my attention last Thursday on our live streaming event. We do this every Thursday at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and he had mentioned it, but I didn't look at it then. And then he mentioned it over the weekend, and I couldn't find time to actually look at it. So then he mentioned it through the week. So I finally went and looked at it, and I should have looked at it on Thursday, because Thursday was when it started to grow. And it has now put itself in a perfect position 
just on top of that 200 day SMA ready to break out. And it looks like it's going to break out because of the volume. It has been growing and growing and growing kind of like a balloon that someone has been huffing and puffing and puffing into and looks like it's just about ready to explode. So the charts say this is a real good time to look at this stock. Now, when I come over here looking for some catalysts, some lingering news, I don't find any filings. They do have some news. They've got some good news. They've been expanding, but nothing I would consider a catalyst right now. But what I do see is that their expansion is increasing their revenues. The revenues are getting bigger. The company looks strong. I think that we could get a run off of this. So PL, TXF, Plant X Life. She finished the day at 0 0.0653, about six and a half cents with just over 1% gains today. She's on the pink tier, she's current, she's got those green ticks we'd love to see, especially if you're gonna be in a stock for a while. If you get into a stock that's growing slowly and steadily, you wanna know you've got a lot of validated information backing you up, especially if it's a pink. You normally don't even get audited financials. You normally just get disclosures, which are just numbers given to us by the management. So whenever you can get verified information, you're ahead of the game. So what does Plant X Life do? Well, they deal with plant-based foods. They have got a big online shop. Plant X's platform is the one-stop shop for everything plant-based. With its fast-growing category verticals, the company offers customers across North America more than 10,000 plant-based products. In addition to offering meal and indoor plant deliveries, the company currently has plans underway to expand its product lines to include cosmetics, clothing, and its own water brand. But the business is not limited to an e-commerce platform, and they're right about that. Now, I did have to go back a bit. This is what they call a management discussion and analysis, an MD&A. And this was at the end of 2021. There was a gap in some information, but this is all still viable information. They tell us at the end of 2021 in December, as of the date of this MDNA, Plant X has announced or opened brick and mortar locations in San Diego, California, Squamish, British Columbia, Venice Beach, California, Toronto, Ontario, Ottawa, and Tel Aviv, Israel. The purpose of the Plant X brand locations is to provide a customer friendly experience where consumers can engage and become educated about the benefits of plant based lifestyle. Sample the cuisine and purchase it right there. Also, in that same year, Plant X acquired a majority equity interest in each of Eh Coffee Core and Portfolio Coffee Inc. Well, coffee's vegan, no doubt about that. Furthermore, Plant X acquired substantially all of the assets of Peter Ruby LLC. Plant X relaunched both Peter Ruby retail locations under the company's X market brand. The company seeks to leverage the warehousing facilities, operational potential, customer base, and plant-based merchandise expertise to boost its e-commerce growth in the United States. The stores will serve as new storage and fulfillment centers that will increase and diversify the company's distribution and capabilities. You know, Amazon's got a lot of warehouses in a lot of places. That's how they got their two-day delivery. You were close enough to one of these fulfillments. So they just can't have one warehouse for their website way up in the north of Canada to get down here. So they're going to get warehouses everywhere. And by making deals with other companies, they're getting those assets. This will enable the company to serve e-commerce customers more efficiently across the Midwestern United States. And here's a couple pictures of some of those sites that they are getting. Anything else they got down here? No. But it is worth taking a look at their website, isn't it? I mean, 10,000 products, you expect a big website. And it is. It's chock full of stuff. Chocolates, cheese, pet supplies, dairy, eggs, snacks all kinds of meats. They got lots of different products here, lots of different name brands, but the one thing I don't see anywhere, and I know this is a bit ironic, but I don't see any vegetables. I know it's vegan and everything's made out of vegetables, but where's the vegetables themselves? It's the one thing they don't sell. It's just it's a little weird. All right, so you can see they've got a decent website, lots of products, they've got stores, they're working in the US, they're working in Canada. So they got a lot of good things going on right now.
So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, we had a nice jump about ooh, roughly four times as much, 400% increase, jumping from just under 100,000 shares a day for the last 30 days to just under a half a million shares today. So somebody's watching it. Share structure for this company. All right, believe it or not, all three stocks that we're gonna look at today, none of them had any information anywhere that I could find. Not in any disclosures, not in financials, not even on Google. No, I was not being lazy today. It just wasn't found. So we're just gonna have to work with the numbers we got here. Outstanding shares, we got 16.6 .6 million. Uh, unrestricted, just a little less, 16.2. Now, I consider the unrestricted the float. Unrestricted shares are shares that are allowed on the market. Well, anything that's not restricted, owned by insiders, is considered the float, the stuff that me and you can buy. So I consider unrestricted and float kind of synonymous. Well, the numbers don't always jive over here that way. The float they give us is a little old. That goes back to October of last year, and they say it was 8 million. Could be. Could be, so we could be anywhere as low as 8.7 million up to 16.2 million. In either case, that's not a bad float. Looking at the financials for the company. Well, this is where they shine. We've only got one year of revenues here, 2021. Now the end of their fiscal year is March. We're gonna need to remember that. Now we got three zeros. You gotta put those behind any of the numbers we're looking at. So this is $5.2 million that they did at the end of their fiscal year, 2021. Looking at 2021, the rest of the year, we have three more quarters here. We can't count that one. That was counted on the annuals. So we've got three, five, seven, eight. We got $8 million here in three quarters, and we've still got one more quarter to add to that year. So they're gonna be, if we follow this, somewhere between 10 and $11 million. That's what I would guesstimate. But right here, we got about seven, $8 million. Coming up from what? 5.2 million. Now they don't give us any more information here, but they do in a recent news press. Here are highlights for the nine months ended December 31st, 2022. So we get to see the rest of it. Gross revenue for the nine months, that's only three quarters, ended December 22 was $11.2 million. And look here, December 2021, which is what we were looking at, I added it up to seven, eight million, saying they had one more quarter. Well, I guess they didn't. 7.4 million. So we went from 5.4 million to 7.4 million the next year to 11.2 million this year. <laughs> Vegan food is getting popular and they've got a huge site and they're working all of North America. So they've got a huge market out there right now. And I think it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. All right. What else we got over here that we could take a look at? Some disclosures? Anything here to consider? No, we haven't had any disclosures in a couple years, actually. So all we really have is the news. All right, our news here goes back to the beginning of the year. They did have another deal here recently. Plant X's Venice retail location builds pop-up shop with Minor Figures. Minor Figures is a small company up in that area, and they're going to partner with them and move their products as well. And here in February, they add a new product, plant-based nuggets. I don't know if those are chicken or chocolate. Gross revenues, uh, virtually a million dollars in January. Things are picking up. And then you got a lot of financial news here. And then Plant X and Affirm make plant-based goods more accessible to customers. Affirm is a payment facility so that they can use it on their website to make it easy for people to pay for their products. And that's what's going on here. Uh, we got other news up here. All right, this is older news. They did get their veganessentials.com domain. I bet it was expensive. You can buy no-name domains that nobody's ever heard of for, you know, 99 cents, 10 bucks. But if you've got a domain that has a, a reputation or people recognize it, it could be tens of thousands of dollars easily. So they got that and they had uh, another company here who was distributing their products and they had a share consolidation. Yeah, so that was back in September. They did a one in 20 reverse split. So that's why we have such a low 
count right now. What was it? 16.6 million possibly could have a float of 8 million, no more than 16.6. So after their share consolidation, you can feel a little good that you get into this for a long hold. They're not going to be doing no reverse split anytime soon. All right. I like the chart more than anything else. So let me share that with you now. Oh, boy, this chart is a revving. This is ticker PLTXF. And we're doing our charting on, who knows the answer to that? Kelly? That's right, think or swim. And where do we get it? Tom. That's right, TD Ameritrade. Sign up for your free trading account with TD Ameritrade and they give this to you absolutely free. And you can use it anytime you like. And did I mention absolutely free? <laughs> All right, we are looking at a six month, four hour view for Plant X Life. We got a high bubble back here of 50 cents. That was in the first week of uh, December, December 7th, actually. And I went and looked. There was no news on this day and not the day before, a couple of days after, but I doubt anybody <laughs> knew about it. So I'm not sure why she got this jump from uh, 22 cents up to 50 cents. Wow, over 100%. And then came back down and she's been falling all this time. Hit this low bubble here, but look at that volume, folks. From nothing, growing, 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 and it is just humongous. Like I said, it's about ready to explode. She was underneath the nine all this time, not just the 200, but every one of them, all this time. And back on Thursday, Cleddy was watching. Back on Thursday, it started to move up. Got up over its 20 on Friday when everybody was freaking out about the bank. This thing was jumping. Look at it, it crushed the 50 day. I don't think we even have a 200 day SMA yet. Nope, it crushed this folks. And then it came back down and landed right on top of it. And then it came back and it's this little bar is halfway of that solid bar. That's what I'm looking for, a perfect average the perfect average of anything is the center, the middle, halfway. So when I see things fall back to the halfway point, it's a controlled fall. I like that. This looks really good to me. Looking down at our oscillators, my PPO looks hot. We got a solid crossover going on right now. PPO is just like the MACD. You want that blue line on the top. MACD had a crossover ooh, about a week ago. She has pushed up very quickly up to her signal line, started to pull back a wee bit, but is now putting on the pressure again. And our RSI has been climbing for a week. She was down there at 33, is now up at 62 and still pushing up. Doesn't it look good? It looks like it's ready to take off, folks, like a little rocket. 20 day, one hour view. Here we've got a 200 day SMA and she's working it folks. Tap, 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 tap. She's just beating on that, gonna break through that floor. She came down here off that low bubble and that was it. I mean, you know, serious downfall, hit a low bubble. Did things change after it? Abruptly, abruptly. She came from underneath everything at her lowest point, went up to her highest point, breaking every SMA, including the 200 with that one big jump came back down about halfway and then started going sideways on top of her nine day SMA. Had another incentive jump here, showing us what she wants to do. Hit a new high, bing, put a pin in it, 0 0.0963. And right now we're at 0 0.065. Our technicals, well, some are strong and some are pulling back. We did have a drop right here and she's starting to bounce up right now. And that's kind of what it looks like. She just got a little wavery in there, but she looks warm. I wouldn't put my hand on that yet. <laughs> five day, five minute. See how flat she was. She was underneath everything here, slowly started working her way up. Like I said, Thursday, Friday, started to get her momentum built had that quick drop and then took off. It, it was like a pogo stick, right? Boing, and got that big jump, landed here on her 20, pushed off, it's come back down to her 50 day SMA and is pushing off of that right now. I like it. I think she's gonna continue to do what she's doing. All right, you can see our technicals are showing this. It's all coming down, there's no bow to doubt it. And you can see our RSI is starting to go up. Now, just for your information's sake, the RSI is nothing more than the price. I mean, literally, the price line. You see here, this flat area, and then a jump and a high. If you were to turn all these bars 
into a line, like you see when you go over to Google, they just put a line up on their charts. They don't use bars. Well, this is the line you see. This line would be right up here laid out in that fashion rather than laid out in this fashion. This is like taking a map of the globe and flattening it out. So she is rising right now. So I would keep my eye on PLTXF. She's in a prime position on the charts. Her revenues are growing. Everybody's bringing out financials right now. They just brought one out. I'm not quite sure that was at the end of December. I think you need to be looking for another financial. And if it comes out as strong as the rest of them, this thing could have a nice rip. It's got a real small float, even if it's 16 million. That is a nice float. This thing likes to rise and it's in the perfect place to jump. PLTXF, put it on your watch list. I told you so. This next stock's gonna be a short flight, actually. <laughs> this is ticker FLYLF. It's a mirror image. See that? FLYLF. I like that ticker. Easy to remember. This is Flight Aerospace Solutions. Now, I found this by looking at the charts. She's got a different sort of chart. She's already been above her 200. She's come down. And it looks like she's going to bounce off of that. That one's a tough one to call. And there really isn't a lot of catalysts involved with this company. She hasn't got any filings. She's got a lot of current news. And it's okay news, but nothing that you would call a catalyst. But again, like the last company, she's got growing revenues. She shows she's doing something and she's doing it right. So I'm hoping that with just a little push, a little market sentiment, we could see some activity off of this chart. So FLYLF finished the day at about 67 cents with almost 1% gain. She's on the top tier of the OTC. This is the QX. We call this the best tier. First off, you have to audit your financials to be up there. CPA's got to do your numbers. You just don't give us the numbers. So they're actual factual. And they've got to give us all the information they got about the company. They don't get to choose what they want to give or not. They give us so much information, they could easily be on the major exchanges. So this is the most transparent, most trustworthy tier on the entire OTC. They have all the green ticks we could look for, that verified profile and a transfer agent. They got independent directors. You need these anytime you uplist. Doesn't matter from where to where. They've got them. Maybe they have plans to uplist again because I know they had to uplist to get here, right? And they are penny stock exempt. Now, this is a bonus, folks. Most people don't understand what this means, but it means they're not a startup company. They're not risky. The actual definition says that the company has to have been in business for three to five years, have millions of dollars in assets during that entire time period, and keep their financial filings current. They've done all that. It means they're responsible. They're not kids anymore. You can send them out on their own and trust them. So everything looks really good with this company. So let's see what they tell us about themselves. Flight provides airlines with actionable intelligence to transform operational insight into immediate quantifiable action and delivers industry leading solutions to improve aviation safety, efficiency, and profitability. Everyone likes that. This unique capability is driven by a suite of patented aircraft certified hardware products. The AFIRS Edge is a state-of-the-art 5G wireless quick access recorder aircraft interface device. What this is, folks, it is a way for the plane to keep in touch with ground control, if you will, anybody. And all the information that is coming from the flight, from the plane, and everything that the pilot says is all recorded and transmitted 5G, which is different than Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is, wi is a thin, slim stream of information. 5G is a big box, a bulk of information that comes. And that's what they do. So what was the relative volume around flight aerospace today? A little less than normal and definitely under the radar all the time right now. 5.5 thousand shares is what she's been doing every day for 30 days. So she's been under the radar for 30 days. And today she dropped down to 4,000. A little more than 25% she dropped. Share structure. Well, as I said earlier, I couldn't find any information on the float anywhere, so we're going to have to deal with what we got here. Again, it's not too outrageous, whatever it may be. Outstanding shares is 38.2 million. 
They tell us unrestricted is 29.1 and they don't even give us a float. And I guarantee you it isn't this number guaranteed so 29 million probably is what it is but at worst it could be anywhere up to 38 million it is the financials that are the bright spot here we've got four years of their annual revenues and you can see they've been up and down but then who hasn't through covid right at the end of 2021 they had done 8.9 million dollars worth of revenue and got to keep 5.1 million looking at 2022 all right, we've only got three quarters here and they add up to eight, 11, 12, almost 13 million in three quarters. And they only did 8.9 in 2021. We've got one more quarter for 2022. Uh, if they do what they're doing here, it should be up to what? Uh, 17, 16 million, somewhere around there. And that's just for the end of 2022. Honestly, we got another quarter here. This first quarter of 2023 is just about over. Now, when will they be bringing out that financial? You can normally tell over here by just looking at their patterns of their others. They bring them out every three months, looks like on the 10th or the 9th of the month, uh, 8, 11, February, March. Ooh, maybe they're overdue. It looks like they're overdue to me. I would expect one any time. A financial should be coming out and I would expect it to be bigger. Outside of that, we've got no other filings here to consider. Jumping on over to that news. Now they got lots of news here. Like I said, most of it is about going to conferences. Boy, they go to a lot of conferences. And a lot of it is about their financials. But every now and then you see a deal that they've made. Now they're not big catalyst deals. They're just small deals, but they're doing things. We had one here back in August. Flight announces IATA Strategic Partnership. And then the next one was actually uh, just a couple days ago, flight receives a certification for the Boeing 737. So they're doing their thing. They're just not doing it like a lot of other companies, you know, making big mergers, acquisitions, stuff like that. But the revenues are growing. Whatever business they're doing exactly with all of that data, it's bringing in the money. And that's what we're counting on. And that's what I'm hoping that financial is going to do. Now let me show you the chart. Doesn't look like most charts we look at, does it? No. This is Flight Aerospace, ticker FLYLF, and we have a six month, four hour view here. And as you can see, she is on an uptrend. Be it ever so gentle, she is climbing right now. She had a low bubble back here in October of 47 cents. She bounced off of that low bubble, got back into her channel here crossed the 200 day and worked away all the way up to the top of the channel and out hitting a high here in mid january of 88 cents came back into the channel and panicked fell all the way to the bottom out of the channel down to the 200 which was her saving grace she stuck it there for about four days and now looks like she's back on her feet shaking off the dust ready to start running again she is looking like she wants to get back into here but we don't have a lot of volume what we've got is a curious pattern on our osculators down here. Do you see this big fat bottle right here? You see how the blue line's coming down and the red line's coming up and then it opens up like a bottle does? Well, while these two are coming close together, guaranteed the price is falling. Look up here. Guaranteed the price is falling when they are coming together. As soon as they get close and start to separate, your price changes direction and starts to go up as you can see right here. So we had a change of direction right here on our ADX. This is my trend continuation, looking for a straight line. And there is my PPO, both are spreading. That looks good. Not to mention, we got a crossover on our MACD right down here. It is low, but it has crossed over, working its way towards the signal line. And we got our first green bar there. And our RSI, egads. The floor is at 30. It was all the way down here at 21. <laughs> they dug a cellar under the basement floor and then put a grave in it. This was deep down there. And it has come up to about 42 right now. Take a look at that 20 day, one hour view. Huge fall, 82 cents out of the channel, down to the low bubble, 61 cents. Bounced off of that, has put herself back on top of her nine day SMA, and right now is sitting on her 20 day, looking like she's ready to get back to work. Our technicals say she's climbing. 
you see our spread, right? That bobby pin, the blue line going up, pink line coming down, guaranteed the price is rising. That looks good. Crossover, lines on top, getting close to the signal line, lots of green bars, everything's looking good. The RSI is a bit tempted right now, not a whole lot going on, she's just more or less going sideways. Five day, five minute zoom in. All right, with only doing uh, 5,000 trades a day, 4,000 trades two day, we're not gonna have a whole lot of bars. So we've got, what, three days of trading here, low bubble of 61 cents, high bubble of 68, and right now we're at 66. She's just basically going sideways on top of the 20 day. We do have a spread here. I mean, it's not great, but it is spread. That is all you need. Our MACD is on the right side of the line, just approaching the signal line. And as I said, our RSI is very calm, not doing a whole lot right now, but she's in a good place. All she needs is a little push back into that channel. And there's a very strong likelihood that it will start climbing to the top of that channel again, at least a halfway point. So I'm watching FLYLF for that financial. It's got to be coming out here soon. And the next one will be close close behind it because I think they're a little bit late right now. So FLYLF, I'm not expecting her to run tomorrow. She could get a surprise pop, but she needs some volume, right? No penny stocks on the major exchange today. Our last stock is another penny stock off of the OTC. This is ticker WNRS Winners Inc. And of course, I found this stock by looking at the charts and it's got a hot chart, folks. This chart is in breakout mode right now with lots of strong volume. Now she hasn't got any filings and she hasn't got any news that you would consider a catalyst from a business standpoint, but she's got catalytic news. Two pieces of news I'm gonna share with you in just a minute. So WNRS, she finished the day at just under a half a penny. 0.0046 and just under 7% gains. She's on the pink tier and current, got those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, and she has independent directors. Now, as I said, you need independent directors if you're gonna uplist. And honestly, I don't know of a whole lot of other reasons you need independent directors. So if you've got them, they're on the payroll and chances are you have plans to uplist. And considering they're on the pink, they ain't used them yet. So things are looking good in that department. Now they say they're a shell risk, but as you're gonna see, that's not the case. They don't have a lot of money coming in, but it doesn't take a lot. You just need to get money on the books. And they've got money on the books as I'm gonna share with you. So I don't like that shell risk there. So what is this company all about? Well, we got a description over here. Basically, the company works with gambling data, research for the gamblers. They don't do anything with betting. They just supply the gamblers with all the information. Winners Inc., through its subsidiaries, is engaged in the business of sports gambling research, data advice, analysis, and predictions utilizing all available media advertising formats, and its database of users. Revenues are expected to accelerate due to the explosion of sports handicapping arising from the 2018 Supreme Court decision that states now have the right to approve sports gambling and the resulting state-by-state -state rapid approval of sports gambling. Its subsidiaries, Vegas Winners, is a registered sports gambling affiliate that intends to drive traffic to gaming operators for commissions. Vegas Winners is currently registered in West Virginia, Indiana, Colorado, New Jersey, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, and able to operate in New York, Nevada, Mississippi, Wyoming, <sighs> Illinois, Iowa, Louisiana, and has made applications in several additional states. Yeah, the uh, Vegas winners, they're going to be working on commissions from uh, bringing gamblers to sites where they can gamble. When I was in Scotland, gambling is legal there. And I was building a website where I was going to put links up and draw in gamblers and then send them out to these gambling sites. And these sites were going to pay me. And it costs nothing to be an affiliate. Almost any company will let you be an affiliate for free. Amazon, eBay, I mean anybody, they'll let you be an affiliate for free. They'll look at your website and approve it or disapprove it. But once approved, you can start putting up ads. When someone clicks your link, whether it be on a social media or a website, whatever, if they click that link and go gamble, you get paid. 
And the way I could get paid, I could get $150 right up front just for the person coming. Whether they stayed or not, just for coming, I got $150. Bucks. Or I could get paid for how much they gamble, how much they bet, how much they lose, or how much they win. And here was the great part. Anybody that signed up became mine for life. It's not like I just got revenues and commissions off of this for a little while. I got them for life. So you wanted to go sign up these big whales that like to gamble. So that is a very lucrative business with very little overhead. Jumping on over to a relative volume. Oh my God, I told you this was exciting news. That is explosive. Jumping from 367,000 shares to 22.4 million. That's something like 50 times her normal volume. What an increase. Share structure for the company. All right, we're gonna have to stick with these numbers. As I said, I could not find float information for any of these, and I'm not BSing you, I really couldn't. So they tell us the outstanding share count is 182 million. Our unrestricted shares, which could be the float, is 123 million. And the float they do give us is a couple years old. That's 62 million. I wouldn't count on that one. So we could have a float of 123 million or it could be anywhere up to 182 million. Looking at the financials for the company. As I said, they're not a shell risk. They have money on the books every year. It isn't much, but they've got it there. At the end of 2021, no, it's not $27. Remember the three zeros? It's $27,000. And they're not paying anything for it. Remember I told you about that nil overhead, being an affiliate, sending customers to uh, a site. That's just pointing. It doesn't cost anything to point. And they get paid for doing that. So at the end of 2021, they had $27,000. 2022, Okay, maybe $60,000 in the first three quarters, but don't forget, we got one more quarter. <laughs> I'm kidding. Honestly, this has nothing to do with the revenues. This catalyst hasn't got anything to do with an acquisition or a merger or even business, but it is real exciting to the investors. So they do have money on the books. They're not a shell company, but the catalyst obviously is not about her revenues. Let's take a look at her disclosures. See what we have over here. We got nothing, not since uh, July of last year. So let's jump into the catalyst. What is it? As I said, it's big news, but it has nothing to do with the business of the merger. It's all about the share structure. They had two pieces of news this month, one on the 9th and one today. The one on the 9th, they told us that they had cut the shares in half took half of the shares away without a reverse split, without anything silly. They had a deal with Clickstream, ticker C-L-I-S. They bought all the shares back from Clickstream that they held in this company and then just eliminated them, did not put them back on the market. So right there on the ninth, any share you held was worth twice as much as before because they got rid of half the shares. Your piece of pie just got twice as big. And then on top of that, they took away the bad news. They canceled a one in 20 reverse split. Whew. Nobody wants that, especially after you just got this big bonus of a 50% shareholder value increase. So everybody's excited about this. And you can see why the shares went from under a half a million to over 22 million today. And the chart is just now breaking out. You want to see it? I want to show it to you. Come on. Uh-huh, I told you this was a hot chart. Look at all this fire. She is in the midst of a breakout right now. This is ticker WNRS Winners Inc. We got a six month, four hour view up. Six months ago, she was just over a penny and a thousand percent later, she's hitting her low in January of 001. She is bouncing off of that low bubble, changing her trend and growing like a lot of stocks we're looking at are doing. She got over that 50 and has been pushing hard to get to that 200, banging her head on it a lot here, but over the last four days, it looks like, she has been breaking through it, hitting her head on the top of the channel now, but getting through the 200. And once she got on top of the 200, she celebrated and shot right out of the channel, way up here. She went from 004 to 008. That was a 100% jump today. She did come all the way back down, back into the channel, but she has landed on top 
of her 200 day SMA. Now, is that a guarantee she's gonna stay up there? Of course not, she could come down, but this is a solid foothold. This is a lot better than hanging on with your fingernails underneath, so it looks good. And look at all the volume supporting it. We had a ton of volume come in today. And that is the story. All of this volume. Is it done or could there be more tomorrow? Yeah, it did fall back at the end of the day. But tomorrow's a whole new day. Our technicals, they're strong. Our PPO has been climbing for a couple weeks here and is still climbing. We just had a crossover on our MACD and it's pushing up. And our RSI is just under 60 and holding right there right now. 20 day, one hour view. I'm gonna get this out of the way, make it a little clearer for us. All right, we've got a 50 day SMA, slowly and gradually climbing and the price is respecting it. It's hanging around this 50 day SMA and that is where it's sitting right now. Now we've just had a new SMA come onto the board, a 200 day SMA. And the reason I make a big deal about this is in many cases, maybe even most, the price has a tendency to gravitate to that new SMA, whether it be above or below. Now, if it's above, that's great. The price rises to the 200. We like to see that. But if it's below, it comes down to meet it. And sometimes it stays down there. But this has been here. Let me see what day this is. That's the 10th. 13th, 14th. So this has been here for a few days now and it has not come down to it. So it may just keep on doing what it's doing. Technicals, they're holding right now. They're warm. They're not heating up. They're not cooling off. Everything is just holding right now. Five day, five minute. We were at a low back here, a double zero three, pushed off of that hard, got on top of our 50 day SMA. Uh, went sideways for a few days, had a nice jump this morning from that double zero four up to double zero eight, fell back, came underneath her 50 day SMA, and right now is sitting actually, looks like she's underneath her nine day SMA. And that's not a great place to be. You can't climb unless you're on top of the nine. That's the first step to the stairwell. So she's fighting it right now. Our technicals say she is in recovery mode. You see the bend here on our PPO. It's trying to come back up. We have had a bend on our MACD and have a crossover right now. She was falling and then started going up. Well, we had a straight line here and now a change of direction and look at our RSI. Our RSI is on boost mode going from 36 up to 52. So yeah, it does look like she's declining right now, but the technicals say she's ready to start pushing up. With all this volume around this stock and the 50% increase in shareholder value, it just makes sense to watch this. WNRS, folks, put it on your watch list for tomorrow, please. Fine. Every day I'm out there looking at these charts, trying to find charts that have setups, maybe a bounce, maybe a continuation, maybe a breakout. Then I go looking for that lingering news. I'm looking for filings. I'm looking for news presses that came out a while ago, maybe a month, two months, and they're talking about something that's going to happen in the future so that we can get into these to make some gains. And I think we found a few of those stocks today. They've got charts that have good potential and they each have their own reason to move. But you need to do your own DD. I'm bringing you some to get you interested. But if you're going to put your money on it, please do your own DD as well. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.